Good morning and welcome to St. Bonaventure as we gather to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Stations of the Cross will be held in Petersburg at 7 p.m. on Friday evening and school stations will be held Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. at St. Boniface. There's a penance service at St. Boniface Church at 5 p.m. today. The Elgin KC Fish Fry will be held Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. Our opening hymn is number 246, Save Your People. Please stand and join in singing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, 
and I have to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach me their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks for that. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my own sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. We've reached the fifth and final Sunday of Lent. After this coming week, we'll reach Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, and then the culmination of all of our Lenten preparation, the Easter Triduum, and the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. And the readings that we have today help us to prepare for this great celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Because in order for Jesus to rise from the dead, he must first go through his suffering and death. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, Jesus says. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, then it produces much fruit. And so Jesus is trying to teach us and his disciples that real love entails sacrifice. That if our lives are going to bear fruit, now, while we're here on earth, and even to eternal life, then we will have our moments when we go through struggles and are called to make sacrifices on behalf of those that we love. So, in the gospel, when Jesus says things like, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life, or in other places, take up your cross daily and follow me, Jesus is saying that Yes, we will share in difficulties and sufferings in this life. Of course, that doesn't mean that all of our crosses are going to look exactly like Jesus' cross. It doesn't mean that we're actually going to be crucified unto death the way that Jesus was. But there are certainly other sufferings and crosses that we will bear. And I think a great example for us to consider is that of St. Joseph. As many of you, I'm sure, know, we just celebrated the Solemnity of St. Joseph this past Friday in this year of St. Joseph, as declared by the Holy Father. And St. Joseph can really teach us how to faithfully follow Jesus during our own difficult moments so that we can move through them to experience the resurrection. And we might wonder at first, well, what kind of sufferings did Joseph go through? I mean, he wasn't even around when Jesus had to go through his cross. He didn't have to watch the horrors of that just as Mary did. 
But Joseph certainly did have his moments of passion. And Joseph's passion, his cross, was the agony of having to make a decision about his marriage to Mary. So Joseph's passion was the decision he had to make about his marriage to Mary. And at first you might think, well, that doesn't sound like much of a cross. It's certainly not equivalent to what Jesus went through. But if you think about it, isn't sometimes having to make decisions, trying to figure out an answer to a problem that you don't have much guidance to go off of, trying to decide the right course, you know, where the next step is for your life, for that of your family, all of those things that are going on inside of us, the stress, the, the agonizing, it's a kind of cross and a kind of suffering. And earlier this week, uh, a seminary classmate of mine who's now a priest in St. Louis, Father Fadi Aro, he gave a beautiful talk on this passion of St. Joseph. So I'm going to borrow a number of his thoughts. And this kind of suffering that Joseph underwent can really teach us of how to accept a number of our own sufferings. So if you think about Joseph, at the time of the Annunciation, when Gabriel comes to Mary, and Mary conceives within her, her womb this child of the Holy Spirit. She immediately leaves and goes and spends three months with her cousin Elizabeth. And what would it have been like for Joseph, waiting back in Nazareth, anxiously waiting her return, and then she finally arrives and he discovers that she's pregnant. What would have been going through his mind? What feelings welled up within his heart? What kind of dramatic struggle was going on in his soul? Because at first, maybe he tried to convince himself that he was just seeing things. But he couldn't deny it. The signs were too, too clear. Mary's with child. And think that how that would have really shattered him inside, trying to figure out what had happened. And the question we might ask is, did Joseph suspect Mary of sin? Because certainly unbelievers assume that Jesus was conceived either by Joseph himself or by some other human man. But Joseph, of course, knew that he was not the father. And so did he suspect Mary of committing adultery? Perhaps there were, were moments of, of weakness that this idea briefly crossed his mind, a temptation that he, that he quickly pushed away as being impossible. And maybe that was part of his agony in those moments, to even consider such a thought of Mary, whose, whose, whose obvious holiness was right there in front of him. And some saints, like St. Jerome says, no, there's absolutely no way that such a thing even crossed Joseph's mind. Because Joseph knew Mary. It probably would have been easier for him to believe that the Jordan River would suddenly turn back on its course or, or that all the mountains would just disappear into thin air than for him to think that Mary had been unfaithful. But even knowing that, it didn't give Joseph any understanding as to what was happening. He knew the child wasn't his, and he knew that Mary could not have been unfaithful. Joseph knew her holiness, and so somehow he must have known that God was doing something. But what? And what was he supposed to do? Because he certainly couldn't just publicly divorce her. I mean, that might save his own honor, but that would lead everybody else into thinking that Mary had sinned and she'd be punished. And he could not allow that to happen. But at the same time, trying to take Mary as his wife and, and assume the role of being the father of, of her child, how could he do that either? He was just a simple carpenter. And if God was truly doing something amazing within her, he was absolutely unworthy to have any kind of part in it at all. How could he dare to be a father to a child whose origin was hidden from him? He was not worthy to share in that mystery. And so this was part of Joseph's trial. And I dare say these are 
moments that sometimes we have as well when we're trying to figure out that best thing to do, the difficult decision. Maybe we even know finally the right thing to do, but then trying to act and actually do it. Maybe the right thing to do means a pretty big sacrifice. It's hard. We have to give something else up. This agony of trying to make the decision. And here Joseph is battling day and night, hour after hour, with this dilemma. He cannot keep Mary, and he can't expose her to shame, because his loyalty to God will not allow him to do either. And so he looks for a way to set Mary free, and at the same time, guard her honor. And finally, he comes to a heart-wrenching conclusion, that he'll just leave Mary quietly. Not because he thought she was guilty in any way, but because he was unworthy to play any kind of role in what God was doing. And so he must return the ring and take back the wedding gifts and he must just go away. And consider just how great a sacrifice that was would have been for him because of his great love for Mary to have to leave her. And, too, if he, if he chose this route, if he did this, he would be the one that would be blamed for being a coward, for abandoning his wife. But he would choose that because then no blame would fall on Mary. It was truly an act of selfless love. And so we could imagine Joseph working out this plan and, and putting it off because it's just so painful to have to do. Maybe he tries packing his bag with tears in his eyes and, and mercifully God allows sleep to fall upon Joseph. And suddenly as he sleeps, the angel of the Lord comes to him. Do not be afraid, Joseph, son of David, to take Mary as your wife. For that which is in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And that's the answer to all of Joseph's fears. He knows now that, yes, this child is indeed God's. And it's a mystery even more beyond his under imaginings because the child is God himself. And his fear of unworthiness and staying with Mary is, is lifted as God calls him a son of David, of of royal background, and telling Joseph to, to give Jesus his name tells him that God accepts him to take the duties of being Jesus' foster father. But Joseph, you are so much more in God's sight. You have so much a greater role in God's plan than you ever thought possible. And sometimes that's part of our struggle too when we don't think that God would really want us really want us to take certain roles in his plan. But you and I, just like Joseph, are so much more in God's sight than we think we are. That God does call us to follow him. Joseph's fear of intruding into this special privilege of Mary is removed. And that's all that Joseph needs to know. He doesn't need to know all the rest of the details of how this is all going to work out. He simply did as the angel commanded him and took his wife into his home. And often that's how our own fears and anxieties will be eliminated and how we can make it through our sufferings and crosses when we, like Joseph, trust God that much. That the God who loved us so much to even die upon the cross for us will never abandon us.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. We bring our needs before our Heavenly Father. For those preparing to receive, to be received into the church this Easter, that their embrace of the Lord's prayer will keep them close to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in civil governor, governance will dedicate themselves to justice, peace, authentic freedom, and generous defense of the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all feel moved to humble repentance through the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people may respond generously to their vocation and seriously consider the offering themselves to God in the priesthood or consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to be ambassadors of Christ to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our families, parishes, and communities be, be, be blessed with true faith, good health, fortitude, and economic stability. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for favorable weather for spring livestock and preparation for the planting season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are faced with daily challenges and illnesses, especially Lawrence J. Bohr, and all those from our parishes needing prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our greater family, the communion of saints, that the dead will know the merciful love of Christ. We pray for the souls of Jerome, Jerome and Elvira Grinmeyer, for whom this mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For intentions and prayers dear to our own hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join, join in offering our prayer for vocations. Heavenly Father, Father make us more holy each day, we pray. Help us to embrace the way of life you plan for us, our vocation. Our vocation. Please, Please protect and accompany all young men and women, women especially, especially from our parishes, who are called to a vocation as priests, deacons, deacons religious sisters, sisters or brothers, brothers, married couples, couples or chaste singles. May they find joy in giving you their boast, their best, their all. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. St. John Vianney, pray for us. Mary, most holy, pray for us. God, our Father, we place these needs in your hands, knowing you hear and answer them in accord with your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Tears have fed me day 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, in having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith. Graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast, with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, repay upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, that we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. 
As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and George our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Longing for water, many 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Our closing hymn for today is number 253, Lord, who throughout these 40 days... O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.